Hello and welcome to another episode of Accounting Insiders. My name is Gary Dehart. I'm the host of Accounting Insiders and also the publisher of Insightful Accountant and Tax Practice News. And today I have the CEO and founder, right, or co-founder for yep. Uh, yep, uh, Reach Reporting. Uh, Justin Hatch is here with me. Justin, thanks for being with me and uh, welcome. Love it. Thank, thanks for having me, Gary. Tell me again where you are located. We're out of the state of Utah. In Utah. What's the uh, skiing? Still, uh, I imagine. Uh, yeah, the uh, the base powder is something like 40 feet or it's it's something insane. In fact, people are already sandbagging and preparing for the floods to come when, when things get warm. Oh, yeah. It's right. uh, record high. And when's that predicted? When's the uh, when's it when's the melt start? In 2011, it was in May, but I just never know. You just never know. So I guess you just ski while you can, and then uh... <laughs> and then surf on the on the rivers coming down or something. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, good luck with that. I haven't been out yeah, to Utah. Thanks. I think last time I was out there was when um, Scaling New Heights was there. Oh was, yeah. That's what three or four years ago, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We might even be pushing a little further than that. But yeah, that's. That was a that was a hot minute ago, but yeah, good old Utah. It's fun. We're we're the better part of us at the team here. We're all transplants from all different places, but uh, yeah, we kind of met here in the great state of Utah. So it's been fun. Yeah, well, actually, you know what? That's I, I was not. I haven't been to Salt Lake in a while. I did go to Zion National Park oh. uh, back in December, and yeah, that, plug plug for Zion. Yeah, it's that is that is a place. That is super. In December, the time I was there was fantastic there was nobody there it was amazing oh no way yeah. yeah yeah it was early december like the buses aren't running so you can actually drive into the park and Not too hot yeah go point to point it was great it was like perfect time to be there don't tell anybody though <laughs> For real. Yeah. That's so, awesome. I, but i think we actually had a purpose of this call so uh of the podcast here and so what we really wanted to kind of dive into is kind of talking about CASP. I'm just going to kind of set up the conversation. So we're going to get you to tell us what you, again, REACH reporting, give a high level of what REACH reporting is, what you guys do, but then talk about what our conversation is really about is kind of the best practices for CAS firms and reporting and, and KPIs is certainly part of that. We just, uh, just did a really short reader profile, and I, I call it a short one just because it had a five questions, six questions. And one of the uh, questions asked, what information would you like to see us providing more of? KPIs were in one of the, there were 22, I think, different uh, options. We asked people to check five of their, you know, what their preferences were. And KPIs and reporting came in, I think they were like number seven, seven most popular of the topics. So our time, and this is still ongoing, but, um, We've got pretty good data from it. So I think our, our conversation is timely. And so we're going to talk about CAS. We're going to define CAS because I think there are a few different definitions for it out there. Floating around out there. Yeah, right. So, so we're going to define it for Webster's right here today. Um, but then, you know, KPIs, what are they if, and, and who it applies to? And then hopefully get into kind of best practices of leveraging this type of information for firms to go out and either better serve their current clients or leverage this information to acquire new clients, which was also another thing that ranked, I think it was probably like number 10 of the topics was acquiring new clients. So I think that is a challenge for all firms, even though um, maybe getting new clients may not be as big of a challenge as getting the right clients might be the mm -hmm. best, biggest challenge. So let me stop talking for a second and I'll ask, well, I'm gonna ask one more question and that is, what is REACH reporting? And just give us kind of the high level, one minute on REACH reporting. Yeah, so REACH, we started in 2015 as a, as, actually as a BI tool. And it wasn't much time after that that we started to get reached out to, uh, pun intended, from uh, various accountants saying, hey, we're desperate for a solution in the accounting space. And, and it, it didn't take us uh, getting asked, you know, 20 times before we, we, we started to really pay attention. 
And so we quickly migrated over into the accounting space. We, we created a solution that enabled accountants to provide powerful reporting functionality to their clients. We wanted it automated. We wanted it, we wanted to have templates. We wanted to be able to create templates. Uh, we wanted it to auto update. We wanted to be able to use spreadsheets, all of this. And these were the things that our, our um, audience of accountants were, was asking us to do. And so we figured out a way somehow, somewhere to build all of these components into a one little solution that enables you to really create powerful reports for your clients. Okay. And uh, is it accounting uh, platform agnostic or? I mean, not entirely. We, we've pre predominantly focused on uh, the QuickBooks, the Intuit suite, uh, uh, the Zero, of course. Uh, we have a, a functionality to be able to bring in trial balances. So if you have that obscure ERP that that nobody ever will integrate with, you know, for some plumbing type business, uh, you can bring in the trial balance information from there. So, uh, but primarily at first, we have focused on the uh, the significantly large accounting solutions. Okay, and is it online or online only, or does it yes. look desktop? Yes. Okay, so online, online, all cloud based. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can log in from anywhere. I got you, and that kind of ties into our reader profile. Qu QuickBooks Online was the number one um, thing that came out in that profile that people wanted continue to, to provide us to continue to provide information on. And that's our, right. so it's not surprising, but um, yeah. okay, so that actually helps me with clarification too. And so, so that's what reach does. So CAS, I've heard client accounting services. That's the one that, that resonates with me. I know I've heard others. And now I say there's others and I'm drawing a total blank what I've heard. Um, yeah. Client, client advisory services is, is, is typically yeah. what, you know, that, the, the general consensus, advisory services, another one, CAS is, is a, a memorable, uh, I said it, acronym. I think it's the tr it's a true acronym. What's, I can't remember what the other form of acronym is. but um, Acrostic, uh, maybe an acrostic. So, something like that, yeah. Anyway, but uh, but, but to, either way, yeah, CAS typically is referring to advisory services or providing advisory to clients. And so we... We've really looked into this space significantly because there's this massive wave of businesses out there that are looking to say, hey, we need the help and support of, of a professional in the space, but we don't, we don't have the budget to be able to afford to bring in some high dollar CFO. So how do we, how do we kind of get the benefits without paying for it through the nose? Right. And that's where CAS was born. Uh, to create a solution for all of the, those massive amounts of businesses that desperately need that. And that wave is just beginning. We are seeing so many indications of businesses continually reaching out to their accountants and saying, hey, we want to get serious about planning. We want to get serious about forecasting budgeting. We want to get serious about knowing exactly what's happening. And so that's uh, that, yeah, why CAS was you know, born and, and now has been coined and and then has uh, exploded from there yeah and, and i would think that you know i can only point at myself but you know from a small business perspective those types of services that type of information i mean you know my business partner and i we're you know we're heads down you know all day trying to grow the business not necessarily trying to look at data not spending our time while we should we both know that we should we both know there's great value there but we also both know that there's somebody, our accountant, who would be much better qualified to look at that data and give feedback based on what that data is saying. Totally. Yeah, totally. It's, and, and, and the problem is for these businesses, and they, they don't have to be, I mean, they, they're typically small businesses as in they're under 500 employees, you know, air quotes, small. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, they're, they're typically significant enterprises you know with with uh, 50 60 people sometimes even and and they're as they're as they were going through their growth cycle to get there the problem was they were starting to need the services of a professional early on but they definitely couldn't afford it but 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 that's on a spectrum of growth from from the beginning to to wherever they're at now and so so that spectrum requires that uh, the growth or the need uh, becomes higher and higher and higher as time goes on. And so that's where this can really, uh, client advisory services is incredibly powerful 
because these advisors can grow, help grow these companies as they grow and grow and grow. Right. And so, and it's a, and it's a huge opportunity, right, for the profession. So let me ask, let me narrow down when we're talking about accounting professionals who could use or should use uh, your type of tool. Um, does that include bookkeepers? Yeah, yeah, great, great question. And it, it, it really comes down to what is it they're trying to accomplish? So what REACH does is it provides a me, it's a medium where, uh, wherein you can provide reports and dashboards. So that's the ultimately the, the thing that our clients will be receiving is these reports or dashboards. Now, what goes on those reports and dashboards? Well, we work with thousands and thousands of accountants all over the globe, actually, and all of them are doing it just, you know, there's a, there's a definitely a, a, a bell curve, you know, you have a vast majority within a standard deviation that are, that are providing a very specific solution, but you have, you have it going out all the way into non-financial metrics and, and significantly uh, providing powerful metrics that are along the lines of non-financial. And then on the other side, you have this hardcore reach. And I mean, hardcore uh, uh, reach into the, the uh, specifics of the balance sheets of the, of the various statements. And so you have these very, very comprehensive solutions provided because you can, you, you can do that now where, where we were forced to in the past to do this in Excel and then next month you're having to do it again. It's just, it, it, it perpetuates this nightmare. Mm -hmm. uh, and what reach enables is you can, you can build these incredibly powerful things as though you were in some Excel or Google Sheets, but the data is always live. It's always being fed. And, and the, the, the spreadsheet component is just, again, a, a way to provide these powerful reports to communicate right. a message to the clients. And so is, is it set up? Um, and and this isn't a you know commercial about reach, but so so this is a general question, but it's also specific to your product because you know your product best. And that is so you have thousands of, of client or accounting professionals that you work with. So let's say I, you know, I use reach reporting for X and I build a dashboard and it has this one little very unique piece that's for. You know, I only, you know, I'm real, I'm a professional that works with uh, private schools and, right. you know, and, and there's this one metric that only private schools measure. Um, yes. Is that something that's available to other people who work with private schools once I build it? How does that work? There are some amazing uh, bits of functionality that we have built and that we're working on uh, to enable that and to enable it further. But we feel like that is the future. Uh, we see so much potential and, and not just in you sharing that, but perhaps sharing it for free, but also perhaps sharing it not for free. Right. Hey, this is something that took some time to build. And, and, uh, and so there's, there's a lot of power there. What it enables is, is we, can, we can start really specializing because with any of these metrics, sometimes these things take a minute to build. I mean, it's, it's a series of little bits of information from various parts of the of the client's company. And as you aggregate those things, you're trying to display or disseminate to the client exactly what they need to know, what, uh, what lever, so to speak, that they need to pull to be able to accelerate the growth of the company. And, and sometimes that lever is a saving lever. Uh, sometimes it's a, it increases revenue. Sometimes it's, it's on the balance sheet and it's, it's affecting the ownership. It's, it, it, but, but there's, there's several of these things, but ultimately what, what, the, what the business owner needs is they need something that's really, really distilled down so that they can receive something and they can say, okay, 10-4, and they can just, they, they can act on that right now. And that becomes incredibly powerful for the business owner. And of course, they're willing to pay for that. So the services of the, the advisor become incredibly valuable as those, those each of those little things are, are uh, provided. And that's, that, that whole process is what REACH really enables is, is how do you enhance that experience? How do we automate it? And then how do we replicate it so that we can do it with the client B and C and D and E and so on? 
Right. But so, um, so bookkeepers, yes. CPAs, I, I'm, I'm certain. And I always throw bookkeepers in there because I, I feel, you know, a, a large part of our audience is involved in that. And I always feel that they, um, and this is a generalization, so I don't, you know, nobody send me a bunch of hate mail or anything like that. But, you know, I, I feel they actually under, um, they don't give themselves as much credit as they could or should. And because they are the ones who are the closest to the data, um, perhaps some of their training hasn't gotten them to a point where they feel super comfortable coming back to their client and going, hey, did you notice this or that? And, you know, and here's a tool or tools that allow them to go, hey, here, red is bad, green is good. Let's focus here <laughs> yeah. or focus there, right? And, so, and, and I mean, to, to your point, you know, we, we, we preach from the rooftops how powerful the, the advice provided from their, their bookkeepers are. And in fact, uh, we, have, we have entire training curriculums specifically for bookkeepers. Of course, we provide to uh, accountants, to CPAs, uh, to is CA is still a thing. I can't remember if that went away. I think it. I think it's just recently went away up in Canada. Yeah. Uh, uh, but you know, we 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 provide these solutions for the the spectrum. But we specifically have uh, we do have some specific programs just for bookkeepers because they don't realize, and that's that Dunning Kruger effect that we were talking about earlier. Uh, they don't realize how powerful the information that they have in their brains is and how their clients are so desperate for it. And, and so uh, part of what we try to do at Reach is, is really enable them to unlock that, but provide it in a way that's, that's really, really easy for the clients to see and understand. The client is, it's, the client is not dumb. We never imply ever that they're unintelligent. But what we do imply is that often they're ignorant of some of the critical things that we know about the accounting realm. Right. And, and sometimes by, by enabling the, the, the client to better understand the specifics of the accounting in a way that is really quick, that they can really, really quickly grasp onto, uh, it, it, it provides this incredible power to them. So yes, uh, in, in terms of who it uh, applies to yes, uh, the full spectrum from bookkeepers all the way to full time CFOs of of uh, individual companies. Right, and I think too the other thing on the business owner is like you said, it, they're you know they're not dumb obviously, um, and and they may not even be ignorant of of the numbers or of what's going on in the back end. In in our case, it's more about we need somebody going hello. You know, aggregate <laughs> somebody going hey you really want to take a look at this you know just stop for two minutes and look at this this is important this is either an opportunity like you said a second ago it's an opportunity to save or an opportunity to grow or it could be both right but just somebody that raises that flag on occasion that says stop doing what you're doing and look at it because yeah. i mean as a small business owner Again, and I have a business partner and we kind of, we spent two hours this morning kind of dividing, you know, continuing to divide up who's doing what. We kind of constantly tweak that, but um, but somewhere in there, you got to have somebody that's on the outside looking in and saying, totally, do, yeah, that's great. Now you know who does X, but, you know, what about the the, the information behind those decisions? And and are you going to yeah. be able to? Yeah, and are you going to be able to pay for it in two months? Are you going to have any cash in the bank? Again, do I know that from a high level standpoint? Yes, I do. But do I know it from a CPA or or a, an accounting professional's perspective? No. I mean, I've got a pretty good general idea of how much money is going out of the bank in the next three days, and how much is coming in in the next fifteen days. But it's a general idea, you know. Um, and, and I think the bigger you get, as you were talking about, you know, small business to the government under 500, ridiculous. Now we know why our government spends the amount of money they spend. <laughs> right. But, right. but, but um, they, they, those small things become a lot bigger and, and compound as the companies grow. And so, yeah, I mean, we spend we spend a lot of the time in in the creation of reports. We we have report building services. We we do training. Uh, 
for report building all the time in, in report. I just kind of aggregate dashboards into that as well. But one of the biggest things we consistently find is it's all about telling a story. So, so sometimes we have somebody who has a deep understanding and all they need to uh, have is, like you said, Gary, uh, they just need to be made aware. More often, it's a situation where not only do they need to be made aware, but we need to provide it in a way that's really digestible. We need to sugarcoat it uh, just a bit so it, it goes down. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's all about communicating the message. In fact, we get into this in our various trainings as well. Uh, how do we tell the story three different ways? How do we say one metric, like so one KPI, and, and, uh, and I can actually get into a little bit on the KPI specifically, but how do we, how do we specifically say with one KPI, we say, we say it in a sentence, we say it with a chart, and we say it with a, ta a table. And so we're able to communicate information really, really rapidly to the, the minds of our executives. In fact, one of the anecdotes we often talk about is the navigator and, and the driver. And the driver theoretically could figure out all of the stuff that the navigator is doing, but the driver is very, very occupied. Uh, and and so it's it's not it's not an it's it's not in this case it's not even an ignorance thing. It's just this is my job. I have to keep the car on the road, and this is the, the navigator's job, and that's to make sure we get to where we're going. So that becomes incredibly powerful as we shift our paradigms just a little bit into this navigator is critical. Yeah, the driver is critical too, but the navigator is essential. And it doesn't matter if they're a bookkeeper. It doesn't matter if they're a CFO uh, with 50 years experience or they, they have one client or they have thousands. Uh, it's the same principle applies as we ch change these paradigms a little bit and understand the value that we really can contribute to these clients and the effect that we can really have becomes incredibly powerful. And uh, there's an enormous value there. And so we talk about this all the time. I mean, we have hours of training on this very subject of how to increase your billing because that's important. And, right. and, and you're providing a service. These, these accounts are providing these incredible services. And because of this Dunning-Kruger effect where, where we... I mean, we can get into all of that, but because of that effect, we undervalue our services. Yeah, that makes sense. And so one thing actually I meant to touch on right when we started, and that was uh, KPI mm -hmm. performance. And again, not down, not talking down to anybody that might be listening to this, but it's always good to clarify when we're talking about, you know, these acronyms or acrostics or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. you know, KPI, Key Performance Indicator, right? And um one thing that you mentioned when we were just kind of having our, our pre-discussion was the every company, I don't think you said it in these words, but you know, every company has different KPIs that matter. Is that a is that a fair statement or a fair representation of one of the things you had said before? So absolutely. So so what we found is that you you have your your high level. Uh, KPIs or what we call them as metrics because they're often a, a, an aggregation. If I, if for example, if I uh, were to be told that my net income is uh, forty two thousand dollars this month, that's great, right? Well, it, it, maybe, maybe is the answer because we don't know. We have to have it in context. Uh, so it could be great. It could also be terrible because maybe last month was 56 and, and the month before was 70 and the month before that was 100, whatever. I mean, that, that would be a very good month for, <laughs> for a rev, uh, 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 I'll take it. net profit. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, so, so we may be trending down very, very quickly. Again, we need somebody up on the watchtower that says, hey, 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 we got a red flag here. Like this, we got to deal with this and fast and here's three ways we can deal with this here's other metrics that can help us understand this and blah 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 blah. on the other hand if we have further context we may see that the month prior was twenty nine thousand. the month prior was 24 and and so on and so now it may be a very exciting number but but the point is if we provide just the kpi the key performance indicator sometimes they're a bit out of context and so what we try to always do is tell them in a story uh, so the story may be just the last six months. 
let's show a trend in the last six months. And me looking at that, I, I could know nothing about nothing. And if I know that the bottom is zero and the top is money, yeah. then, then I know, and we're trending towards zero, then I know that this is bad. So that, that's been communicated to me really, really rapidly. We hear countless times of people that are dealing with situations where they provide the reports to their clients with specific things in the reports. And then they find out some period later that their client not only didn't uh, even uh, open it, but they, they had no desire to. They didn't read it. They have no idea what's in there. So we also believe that providing a compelling report is powerful. And it, there's, there's an enormous value in making the report compelling. Mm -hmm. We believe that reports could make people feel sophisticated. So a lot of the reports that we create enable people in businesses to feel sophisticated. They're where they're proud to share this with their board of directors. Now, then we have to go to the accountants and we say, okay, now you have to become a graphic designer. And they're like, this is not gonna happen. No. Right. Like it's, and I mean, if somebody told me I had to become a graphic designer, I'd, I'd tell them to jump in a lake. So, so what we essentially did is we said, okay, how do we solve for this? How do we create something that's so automated with the design functionality that we're able to provide these sophisticated, powerful, impressionable reports to our clients, but without having to have me and you and, and our accountant friends spend a whole bunch of time doing that. And so that's really the essence of, of what it is. So then going back to those KPIs, it's then, it's then providing those in the context, which we then, we call metrics, there are, they become our metrics, and then providing those in uh, providing additional context, context where we now have in a sentence, in a chart, in a table, in a graph, in whatever, you know, right. in, in providing it in different ways so that it can really quickly and easily be absorbed. And in a, in a way that the advisor can sit down, whether it's via Zoom or even just the phone with, you know, sharing a screen or what have you, and have that conversation and deliver the value that tools like this, you know, allow them to deliver in a, in an easy, fast, consumable for fashion, right? Totally. Yeah. And, and we find that in those, in those specific cases, when they're going through it, they're, they're watching their client. They, they know this, they know the data. So, so they're watching their client watch the data. And as their client furls their brow or, or shows some, some expressions of confusion or enlightenment or light bulb moments or, they're, they're able to see where in the report each of those things happen. And then we can start elaborating. Then we can start getting making things interesting. And now we're going to our clients and we're providing them as the, 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 uh, the advisors are providing their clients with something that really resonates with their clients. Or they're able to see questions that their clients may have, but may be too nervous or, or uh, <laughs> overconfident, I will say, to right. ask. Uh, because sometimes sometimes those things happen too, and so we can delve into those and and provide further light and knowledge on that very subject, so to speak. Yeah, and, and get ahead of any problems that that might exist, right? Which I think is a big part of it. So before we wrap up, we had talked about uh, one of the things we wanted to try to cover today was you know best practices for cast firms now. Obviously, we're not going to be able to hit every single best practice for a cast firm. So I think we want to make it around, you know, around these types of tools and, and how to leverage these tools for either, I would say either for business acquisition or growth or better serving your current and existing clients. I think that's really, to me, kind of the, the areas of opportunity. It's either growth or better service. And better service would eventually turn to growth as well. But um, I guess maybe a differentiator too, but that, that's kind of a combination of two. So from, from your perspective, when a client, when, a, when an accounting firm, whether it be a bookkeeper, whether it be a CPA, full service practice, when they get into advisory and are, have tools like this available, what's that process look like of, of bringing it into the firm kind of, again, best practices, bringing it into the firm and then turning it around, learning it and presenting it back out to their client. Right. 
I threw a lot at you there. So yeah, yeah. So that's you we're, we're, we're going to grade you. So. Okay, okay, deal. Okay. <laughs> so there's a there's a couple of things that we feel super strongly about. One of them is look at how cameras are priced. So cameras. So we have our basic camera that we're going in and we're buying the most basic. It's the low. I mean, back in the days when we used to buy cameras, right. uh, with your, your lowest end camera. Then you have your kind of middle end low grade camera and then you have your kind of your prosumer and then you have your pro camera you know we're sitting at a best buy back in in the 90s right and and uh we're looking at those things well well if we if we carefully look at this the pro one often what we find is it's actually not a true pro camera it's a it's a prosumer camera and often what will happen is they will use that camera as a price anchor so you're going to have the crazies that just go in and they just buy that camera no matter what that's amazing. Best Buy loves those people. The, the, cam, the camera manufacturer loves those people uh, because they do that. But the whole purpose, generally, the whole purpose of that camera, and you can look up these studies on, on uh, uh, Google, uh, but the whole purpose of that particular camera is to anchor the price for the others. It's to provide an anchor so that when you look at the others, you're like, okay, these are much cheaper in comparison. It's the reason why when we walk into a, a Costco, the very first thing we see are the Six thousand dollar TVs that catch all of our attention, right. because everything after that is cheap relative to what we just saw. We've just been anchored. We are a psychology experiment of Costco's, and we have now been anchored into a price. Uh, and so everything we look at after that is is inexpensive relatively. Mm -hmm. And so, I would strongly, absolutely strongly urge that each advisor doing any form of of cats providing any level of reporting provide a minimum of three reports where you can have you you can have the the uh the bronze the silver and the gold and and a, uh a platinum if it's if it's possible for you to add that so you have those and you put people in certain categories so they're subscribing so to speak to one of the levels of that and and, and as as you start to grow into the, the, the silver from the bronze level, eventually you, you reach a threshold where you say, hey, look, we're getting into sil silver territory. Or we're gonna need to change your, your package to silver, whatever. But often what happens is it's like getting popcorn at the movie theater. We want the medium size, but the large is only 70 cents more. Mm -hmm. and, and they're also weird numbers, so we can't just do quick math. But it's only a little bit more. We can just see it's just a little bit more. And so we, we end up going with that. So use that price strategy when you're providing solutions to clients out there. And we've seen so, so much power with it. Um, so then by extension, make sure that the reports you're providing are basic summary reports in the bronze. The silver is, is starting to get some elaboration, maybe some non-financials. The gold maybe has non-financials and forecasting, maybe some budgeting. And then the, the, the platinum has all of the above with, with uh, case, I don't know, whatever. Because that's worth it. Because you're charging 2300 bucks a month for a report. And we've seen people do it. And it's amazing to watch. And customers, clients will pay for those things because we value what we pay for. So they end up putting more value. Anyway, brilliant, long answer to it. Also long question, but but hopefully that uh, that is the first step into uh, embellishing what firms could be doing. Yeah. So what about if um, I'm going to add to that? So I'm new. I'm new to, to reporting. New to KPIs. I have several customers that I think this would be a good fit for. Walk me through the process of, of kind of embracing the process, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So do I so do one at a time? Do I throw them all in there and see what I get? What's What do you yeah. see? Successful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a tough one. I definitely recommend, uh, you know, starting with one or two uh, just right out the gate. Um, and then as you do, utilize the templates available in Reach. Um, if you are not using Reach, if you're on another platform, do some Googling of, of top asterisks, metrics, or KPIs for industry. So top 
metrics and, and put the asterisks in there because it will, it will, it will replace it uh, in Google, in the Google search with some number, metrics for whatever industry, plumbers. Uh, and, then, and then just sift through those, mm-hmm. look through and say, okay, what things, uh, what, what little things would be really interesting for my client? The biggest part about reporting is you have to know your client. So just like if we were teaching history, if we were teaching history to history buffs, we would speak, teach it very differently than if we were teaching history to kindergartners. So we need to get to know our client just a little bit to kind of assess where they're at. And once we have an, a, a, an idea of where they're at, then we can start getting into the nitty gritty of saying, oh, okay, okay. I see. Okay. I see where you're Okay. This is the message I'm going to deliver. So I'm going to provide it in this tonality, this, this, uh, these types of terms, these are the terms I'm definitely going to leave out. They will, they won't land at all. They won't make any sense. And then, and then build from there. So, so it's essentially in that process, uh, start with a understanding of, of who they are, use the, the templates that are built into reach there. There's some beautifully powerful templates uh, where we, where we follow, you know, we eat our own dog food, so to speak. We, we, we follow the principle of, of every metric three times. We follow the principle of milk before meat. We follow the DIKW pyramid, which we could get into in another call. We follow the, the uh, Dunning-Kruger. We, we, we look into those effects. We look into how information is absorbed by brains generally, not, not just, you know, accounting people versus the rest of the, like how brains burn calories. And so we look into all that stuff. So by all means, use those things. So answer to the question, look up KPIs metrics for the industry, use the templates built into reach, bring those together in creating something that really resonates with what your client is saying to you. That's fantastic. I, I don't know why we would keep talking. I think that's uh, <laughs> that's a good way to wrap it there. Um, I think we did want to point out that you were going to stand up a page that was reachreporting.com slash uh, IA. Uh, we'll have some information Correct, yeah. there. And then uh, then you and I, too, will pick up some other conversations in the future, just where we can kind of drill down a little bit more on some of those things you referenced, like the, I always get it wrong, the somebody Kruger and the DIK. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. Kruger, Freddy Kruger yeah. and the uh, <laughs> and, and, and I think even just the... Uh, I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into some of those key reports that are just kind of the base and like, you know, here's your, you know, if you don't do anything else, you got to be doing this with your clients. Totally. And then you add this and then you can add this and add this. And, and as you add, then you're adding more value. So hopefully we can get together again very soon and keep this conversation uh, going just around dashboards, KPI, and ultimately advisory, right? And, and Love help, it. helping our audience just drive more towards that advisory business. So certainly appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us, Justin. And we will catch you very soon, I'm sure. Thank you. Sounds great. Thanks, Gary.